It is officially winner for Sanderson for this week. I cannot even cope with the way I look. Like I can't. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's look is clearly this right here. I don't show you how I do my body painting. It is just the face because I got this from a Made You Look tutorial, which I will link down below. As you can see, it's got more to it, but there's elbows that I haven't painted because and you just couldn't see them in the videos, so I didn't see the point. But this is the full makeup look with the wig from Sheen. I will list everything down below. Do please stay tuned, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and let's just get into the video. Okay, let's start off by saying I had no purple glue to glue my eyebrows down. And in all honesty, I absolutely hate gluing my brows down. So I found a new tutorial where a girl showed me, I can't remember her name, I'm going to leave the link down below because I did fully copy how she does it. But she uses soap brows as a way to flatten the brows and to cover them up so that you can look like you don't have any eyebrows. So I followed all of her tutorial. I will say I didn't follow it properly at the beginning. I didn't listen correctly. As you can see, I'm just going through my eyebrows with the soap brows and I'm just flattening them down with the back of the brush. Just make sure these are so, so flat because oh, I can honestly say, no matter what I do with my brows, they somehow manage to pop back up. Even if I use the infamous purple glue, they still manage to pop up. But once I'd flattened them down with the soap, I then went in with my Ben Eye Fair Powder, popped that all over the brows and just let it settle. And then I went in with a fan brush and just dusted off the excess. You want to make sure you really embed that translucent powder. So patting it on with a sponge is the best way. And you don't want to like rub it. You just want to pat and go in the direction that you flatten those hairs down. And then as you can see, I took the feather light brush and just dusted off any excess. Then I went in, now this is just me personally, I went in with a little bit of a peachy toned powder, like a pressed powder, and popped that on my brows as well. I thought, why not? You can never do enough colour correcting, so that is what I've done with that. Then, this is when I made the mistake. The girl did say to take a cream peach toned product. I took my MAC Prep and Prime, thinking she said liquid, don't even ask, and I started to pop it on. Now, don't get me wrong, it worked to an extent, but it hasn't got the, the heaviness, the cream element to it that really does help keep those brows down. So I was a little frustrated with myself, but then I got a hold of my Grimace foundations that had a peach tone to it cannot tell you what name it is I've, there's no stickers left on them grimace products but i popped that on and look at the difference you can just tell the difference when i've gone in with the cream to when i've gone in with the liquids so just make sure you go in with the cream when you watch the girls video because this just made me feel better about putting my brows down i don't like going in with glue because i do have brows that Although I have a lot of hair on my brows, it's not like coarse hair, it's not like strong hair. So I am a bit reluctant to always glue my brows down. I just am. I'm just a bit of a crank. But anyway, once that's done and you're going to go in with some translucent powder and then you can layer it back up again. Maybe try and layer it only two to three times. You don't want to do too much. And then go in with your foundation. As you can see, you can still sort of see mine and I do sort of go over them throughout the process. It was the first time I've ever used soap brows as a way of doing my eyebrows. Although I know, you know, the glue is the same process, it's it's not. It, the glue does go through them a lot better, but I just don't like having that glue in my eyebrows. Remember, Winifred is very pale, so make sure you pick up a very fair tone foundation and pop that all over your face. As you can see, I went back in with my brows because you can see the oranginess and the peachiness of the cream product and then went back over it with some more foundation. But just make sure you go in with a paler shade. It doesn't have to be extremely pale if you don't want it to be. I just want it to look as close to Winifred as possible. So going all over the face with the foundation and then I buffed it all out using a beauty sponge just because that's what I Any prefer to do. The dogs are going after the heads. There's loads of fireworks at the moment, so there's loads of barking in this house. So I just want to apologise if you hear them in the background. But once you've done that foundation, again, just make sure you're happy with it. I don't know why I went back in to cover these cheeks of mine because they actually benefit me in this look. And I covered them. I should have just left them. So if you've got rosy apple cheeks like I do, just leave them. Like, that is what she has. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. Once I've done that, I then covered the whole face, including the eyebrows again, with tons of that translucent powder. I wanted to be really, really matte because that is what Winifred is. She is very matte. And as you can see, I'm just going back and forth with them brows because we were having an argument and they were winning. And I was determined to win the argument because I don't let my brows win. 
ends of discussion. We got there in the end, but obviously watch the video, practice the video before you decide to go and do this look if you're going out for Halloween and then do it because yeah, if I'd just gone in with the cream the first time round, I think it would have been working perfectly fine. So then I went in with a white on the brow bone of my eyes. The reason I'd done this was to really highlight the fact that she's got no eyebrows and to really highlight that brow bone, bring it forward and just look a little bit more uglier. Then I picked up the fairest shade in the contours of the shade and light from KVD. This for me just was a really nice way of me drawing the shape without me going in with the dark straight away. So I just went in with that, created the shape that I wanted and just created more like a circle shape. It's neither circle nor like just slightly outwards. It's like an outward slight slanted circle. Like she's very rounded in the eyeshadows but they do also slightly just drift up to the edges a little bit. And then just making sure you like sort of blur that into the white eyeshadow you used. The white eyeshadow honestly just changes the eyes a little bit without you even realising it. Obviously if you don't have a white eyeshadow, don't panic. Don't panic, you don't need it. It just adds to the look. Then you want to bring that colour towards the inner part of your nose from the eye area. So the inside part of your nose on both sides and you want to bring it down past the inner corner of your eyeball. I just find this makes your eyes look tighter, more just more old and haggard looking, which is obviously what Winifred is. And then I went in with a darker brown and just worked that up into that lighter shade. And you can go as dark as you want with this. Like the thing is with Halloween, and I say it time and time again, you do not have to, excuse me, now my treadmill's going off its head. What is going on in this house today? You do not have to stick to the rules. Like there is no rules for Halloween. I just wanted to look the closest to Winifred. You could darken this up. You could make the eyes a little bit more glam if you wanted to. I just wanted to look as ugly as possible, clearly. So yeah, you just go in with a darker shade and go over that lighter one. The reason why I like using that lighter one is it's just a good way of knowing where you're placing your shadows. Then what I decided to do was just go over the inner corners with a bit of translucent powder just to blur them in a little bit, you know, just so they weren't so harsh. And then once that's done, just pick up a darker brown and focus that on the lid. You don't need to bring that too high. You just want to make it blur into that brown you've just used. So it's just to make your eyes seem a little bit more like scrunched up, a little bit more tired there. You know, as I've always said loads of times, you always make sure when you're using a black smoke, you place it above the crease to open up the eyes. Then with this one, you're going to place it slightly below the crease or into the crease to make your eyes seem like that a little bit smaller, but still like blend it slightly in if that makes sense, as you can see. It does go slightly up, but the main bulk of colour is mainly on the lids. Then it's time for the fun part. Start drawing the wrinkles. So this is just something I followed off a picture. So she has really deep um, cheek lines. She also has quite a few dimples and lines on her chin. She has cheek dimples. She also has like the top lip where she pulls that, I don't even know what you're going to call it, that cat's ass we'll call it cat's ass mouth she, you want to make that look as big as possible she's of she's got a shadow in behind it so i also do shadow the top lip as well as well as the nose bringing it down the side of the nose and around the nostril area will just make you appear more haggard more old more uglier like bless her soul but winifred weren't blessed was she but she was cute in hocus pocus too when she was younger like I think because I've got big teeth and big teeth running my family, I'm just kind of like, she look cute. Like, I, this look was made for me. I don't really have to try with this teeth thing because I've got big teeth. <laughs> I always win a duck apple because of it, so I'm rolling with it. Mine are more like bread slices than they are long, though. Um, but anyway, you also want to put some brown in the hollows of your under eyes. I deepened my under eyes slightly. I mean, I always have hollows anyway, but you just want to deepen those as well. And then when you've drawn them, buff them out with a bit of translucent powder, the leftover powder that's on your big brush. It'll just soften the lines, make them look more realistic, less like caricature, if that makes any sense. So once you've done all that, then buff them out. And then that's pretty much it for the lines. There's not much else other than contoured in your cheeks. She does have really muddy cheeks and I don't know what they were aiming with that because it actually doesn't do that much for a face. I think it's just to look, again, like I said, more haggard, more old, more witchy-woo-woo. So she does have a really dominant contour, like back when contour became a big thing and everyone was just sort of 
shoving it on the face and rubbing it up and down. That's kind of the, the gesture you're going to do with this contour. It's pretty much the same thing. Once you also want to do is that chin. That chin is so important. I think it changes the whole look. So make sure you follow that chin bit because I think without the chin, this wouldn't look nearly as good. Try and find like your double chin. I was I could find my double chin well easier than this, but I'm not putting that all over the internet. Like, Jesus Christ, I already look bad enough. So yeah, just um just make sure you do your chin area because it's vital. And as you can see, I'm just doing, I'm pulling the face. Pull the face as you're doing it, by the way. Like, I know it's 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 hard to say, but it's natural. Just pull that face and you will find where your lines need okay, to so be. Okay, so once you've done all your lines, as well as your wrinkles, the little your contour, extras, you're going to move on to your blush. And for me, the blush and the lips on Winifred is one of the, is probably the most important part. She has proper red, like pinky toned apple cheeks and she has the red lip now i originally went in with a cool tone blush from physicians formula and that would have been great if it had just been that little bit brighter so what i then went in with was the pixie on the glow sticks and then i went a little bit too far i'm not gonna lie i went a little bit too far with that now you can go as like red as pink whatever as you possibly want like it is completely and utterly down to you i probably would have took a little tiny bit less pixie if i was to do this look again i wouldn't have gone in with as much as i did but you know what i haven't used that red one in a while so i forgot how pigmented it actually was so that is also all on me so you can go as bright as me that's completely fine or you can dull it down whichever way you prefer but the one thing I will say, if you wanted to showcase on camera for your Halloween parties, you want to make sure that everything is more. This is what I always wonder, as you can see, I'm clearly looking at myself thinking, why am I putting this on the internet? Why am I allowing myself to look this way? I am so single, it's not even funny. And then I'm putting this on the internet, like I'm going to be single forever at this rate. <laughs> but anyway, I honestly don't understand how or what, should I say, what people must look like when they wear all the makeup they do for Instagram and YouTube and everything because it's so much. In order for it to showcase on camera, it is so much and I'd love to know what it looks like in real life. But the only time I'll ever put that much on is for Halloween because you want to make sure that you can see it at your parties, on camera, on your TikToks, on your YouTube, whatever it is that you're doing. You want to make sure it's, I hate the words, but penetrating through the screen. Once you've done your blush and you're happy, as you can see, I buffed mine out with loads of translucent powder and it really did just soften it to the right amount. I then took the Fenty Beauty lip paint and I done my lips. Now, pull on the face helps this. But one thing I will say is I was talking to my mum. What you can't see is my mum's stood there chat, chattering away. So on the editing process, I've actually nipped out where I've stopped and spoke so my lines don't actually perfectly match up and i didn't realize until later on so that is completely my error so make sure you top and bottom line up perfectly to make that poutiness um because when i was talking they look slightly out i don't know if that's just the way i talk though it could be but i feel as though they were just slightly just slightly off just a little smidgen but yeah once you've done this lip bit it's basically done like i said you're going to draw all that on. You can make it deeper. So if you've got even skinnier lips, just go in and create that contour around the lip. Honestly, it really does help. Make sure you overdraw because she does have a really like pouty, pout, pout going on. Then I just went underneath my eyes, took a little bit of dark brown and made sure to pop a little bit on there. I then went in with mascara. I just use the cheapest Rimmel one that I absolutely hate for these Halloween looks because it's getting washed off straight away. But yeah, I went in with mascara. You could use lashes if you want mine are long enough. I didn't feel a need to. And then it is time to pop your wig on and do your widow's peak. And that is the look pretty much done. Obviously, I've just painted the costume on just because I haven't got the costume and I can't keep buying 50 60 pound costumes just to do looks but if you want to know how i done this i followed a major look tutorial because she is the best at it by miles so i just followed a major look for this bit um and then just a picture for the winifred sanderson part but yeah widow's peak wig on i look so ugly i cannot wait to get in the shower and wash this off like wow wow same it's, um, it's something else isn't it so yeah 
that's the look guys thank you so much for watching my video and i will see you next time have a fabulous halloween bye